quiz. What is the meaning of life? Senseless. Oh, so deep. <laughs> Ooh. I forgot I pour a Red Bull in that. <laughs> it's a whole different vibe. Daddy's awake now! You know what I hate, Daddy? I bet you're gonna tell me. <laughs> Nothing like a good old yes and. <laughs> the internet. Why? Because I went on Google the other day and I typed in sex education quiz. And you know what I got? Education quizzes? No, I got quizzes for the show <laughs> Sex Education. Ah! Uh. So today, I want to express my hatred for sex education quizzes that didn't show up by testing us on some sex education quizzes. But I do like that show. It's a great show. It's, it's a great show. It's a great show. It's great. Hello! Welcome back to What's Safe Word. I'm Amp. I'm Mr. Christopher. And today... Oh my god, what are we doing? I'm testing your patience. You... <laughs> always. <laughs> and feel like this is a trap. Never! <laughs> In all seriousness, I always think it's funny when you see those like BuzzFeed quizzes, which ironically was one of the top search terms when you look for sex education quizzes on the internet. So as to self-proclaimed people that have a lot of sex and therefore we are educators in some ways. So today I figured let's test our patience and our skills as sex educators. I wanna see how good we are at sex educating based on the easiest test available on the first page of Google searches. We are so good. We've been doing this for years. I, okay, I haven't studied, have you? I don't need to, I, I am, I'm in the zone, man. I'm right there. Yes. So today we are gonna test ourselves on sex education. Woohoo! I love knowledge. whiteboards. <laughs> Which color do you want, white or blue? Uh, I'll do white, because okay. I'm pure. Oh, well, and I'm blue because it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, let's get it. <laughs> so today's first quiz is going to be from the critically, well, not claimed, just critic. We're very critical of them. It, it's a weird site. Buzzfeed. Yes. yes. Because they've got a test for just about everything, and this is apparently an easy beginner level test for actual middle schoolers. So All let's right. see if we're. Oh wow! <laughs> so the pressure is building because if I don't. If I fail this, then... Canceled. <laughs> I'm gonna be so canceled. <laughs> so, the first question here on our test says, which STI is affectionately known as the clap? A, gonorrhea. B, shingle. Shingula? I swear Sh I can read which it. Shingles. Shingles. Or C, hepatitis. Okay, I know this one. What'd you say? I said, uh, gonorrhea. I also said gonorrhea. Hey! And he even says, here's a little pointer for y'all. This is a, a basic, a, an extra fact. Gonorrhea is a bacterial infection that can have next to no side effects. Around half the women and one out of 10 of men affected with gonorrhea do not experience any symptoms. But I always wondered why they call it a clap because it's not very exciting. Yay, you got gonorrhea! No, actually I do know where it comes from. What? So the clap is an old English word I think that kind of refers to clapping, which they were referring to throbbing or painful feelings. And it was usually around brothels that you would see it spread. So as people left the brothel, everyone would, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> It did have to refer to the, the throbbing feeling though. It was like this clap that they experienced. What, you didn't know that? Then why don't they call it the throb? I they call it the clap, you, why not the throb? But you saw Throbberia on the next season of RuPaul's Drag Race, right? No. Throbberia. No, Please welcome to this day. Is that a new drag queen? Throbberella. <laughs> the next question, what is the name given to a sexual fetish for cheating? I know this without even looking at the answers, but A, edging, B, switching, or C, cuckolding? Oh, 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 oh. But three, two, one, C. I said cuckolding. I did too, and but, I added a little butt cheek to mine, like ball. But is it really a fetish of cheating? I think they kind of didn't write this question well, but I bet you that C is the, yep. Well, even in the description that they give, cuckolding is actually the sexual pleasure derived from being made a cuckold of. Wait, so it's not, hmm. I'm not sure if I would It's watching your partner have sex. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And enjoying it. And they go on to say, usually a straight thing. Wow. <laughs> Commonly, it is tied to a man's fragile sense of his own manhood. Oh. Not necessarily. Okay, come on. But BuzzFeed, come on. Who are you calling fragile? In a lot of cases, cuckolding is actually a very nice situation where you are trusting your partner so much oh, and you yeah. are trusting and having fun with them. I wouldn't say it has to do with fragility. And I also wouldn't call it uh, cheating. Cheating. Yeah. It, it's a kink of watching your other partner have pleasure in a lot of ways. Yeah. And it can be in such a way that they degrade you, but even then it's more about humiliation than cheating. Yeah. Next, assuming question. Select the correct spelling of syphilis. Oh God, oh God. I hate spelling. A, B, C, and D. 
For me, it's between two L's. Is there two L's or one L? I can't, I'm not telling you because I know which one no. it is. No! I do. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do, um... Take the L, daddy. <laughs> I'm taking <laughs> two L's. Okay, three, two, one. I said C, one L, and you said... Two L's. Two L's, I you said, said B. B. Which one should we choose? We'll go with your answer, daddy, because I'm pretty sure it's wrong. Oh! oh. One L, baby! Damn it. Potentially fatal disease that can remain dormant in an infected person's body for 10 years. That was a trick question though. Cause it could, I mean, it's pronounced the same. It only takes one L to lose. That's how I remember it. Oh God. <laughs> and that's how other people remember it. Do you know what? It's true though. There's only one L. I also just, I feel like if it had two L's, it'd be syphilis, you know? <laughs> but it's Liss. Not nuts. Just take the L, daddy. Just take the L. I got three. Okay, here we go, daddy. To where is the arrow pointing on the illustration of the female reproductive system? A, the uterus. B, the cervix. Or C, the vagina. I don't see an arrow. Uh, right here. That's it's going, an it's arrow? Pointing, it's pointing right in the middle. To the red panties? <laughs> it's pointing to where the fallopian tubes connect, if that helps. Probably doesn't, because I know the answer. <laughs> okay, I'm going to say. Uh, I will say that we are two very gay sex educators. Very so gay. I'm very I'm not gay. Expecting I know to get nothing. This. Two, one, the uterus. What you said? Vagina. Ooh, okay, well, yeah, that's the uterus. Uh, the uterus or womb is a hollow organ but in the pelvis where a fetus develops during pregnancy. But isn't the vagina like a pink triangle? Well, the vagina is, so that's the, 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 what leads to the uterus. Where's the vagina? The, the pink part on the bottom leads to the uterus. Oh. And oh, the uterus well, is the opening. Okay, so I is. wasn't looking at it that way. I was looking at it this way. I was looking, so. No, that, everybody looks at it that way. Don't even try, don't even try. <laughs> I was looking at it upside down. Okay, fine. What are these? What are those? They're, um, <laughs> horns. <laughs> the ovary. <laughs> those are the ovaries. Eggs. They're eggs. Oh my god. <laughs> Next question. If left untreated, AIDS can lead to the disease of HIV. True or false? Three, two, one. False. false. It's the other way around. It's actually the other way around. Yeah. HIV Easy. can lead to AIDS. As people who take PrEP and know about our HIV status, that's pretty simple for us. But a lot of people don't know the difference. We don't teach it in every state. Good job, Daddy. You got a point. We've come a long way, baby. Next question. All right. <laughs> okay, this one's a kinky one at least. The next question says, someone who has queerophilia is turned on by what? A, latex. B, hands. C, ghost. Or D, cake. And not like the, the butt cake, like actual cake. Queerophilia. Yes. I'm gonna say, because I know it's not ghosts. You in danger, girl. <laughs> or cake. I'm gonna say. Love your order of operations, because that's the same thing. That's the same thing I'm doing, I think. Because spectrophilia is ghosts. But anyway, I said B. I said hands. I said hands too. It's, but it could be latex. I don't think it is, though. Yeah, because it would be. Because it'd be rubber or rubber fetishism or something like yeah. that. Hey! Yay! Hi! We are so smart. Someone who has a fetish for hands may be attracted to fingers, well manicured hand or the size and shape of a person's hands. Oh, are you flipping off? Stop using your hand to flip people off, please. <laughs> yeah. What if I do jazz hands? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Can I get those fingers moving? Ah! Um, the next question on here says, who is today's sponsor? Do you know? No, you didn't tell me yet. <laughs> Three, two, one, Helix Sleep. Long-term sponsor of the show here and big admirer of people not only getting down and dirty in the bedroom, but making sure you know what you're doing in the bedroom with education. And even though I may not be as smart as BuzzFeed, I was able to take the sleep quiz on Helix Sleep. Helix knows that everybody's different. And with the Helix Sleep Quiz, you can get a mattress for just yourself or for you and a partner where you put in all your stats, your height, your weight, your age. Or how much they snore. That's actually not in the quiz, but firmness, how you like to sleep, which could lead to snoring, as well as, you know, back, side, front. And it just helps you find the perfect mattress for you, which happened to be, Daddy, the Dusk, what? Lux. And, Daddy, how are you enjoying it? I love my dust lux. <laughs> Say that three times fast. Dust, dust, dust lux. Dust, dust, dust lux. Oh. Dust lux. Oh, yep. And since getting our mattresses, I've actually never had sleep 
that was this good. I had an old mattress that had some springs in it, and because Helix has springs and this lovely like cushioning sensation, they're not only the best mattress for sex, but they're just the best mattress to get a good night's sleep. And before I got this mattress, I had my other mattress for over 10 years. Plus, Helix not only ships to you very, what daddy? Quickly. And when you're ready to really let it inflate, what do you do, daddy? Ooh, it's the opposite of a vacuum rack. It goes ASM, are you ready for comfort? If you've ever bought a mattress, there is that nagging sensation of like, ooh, is this the right mattress for me? I don't know if I like this. So we especially like that they have what, daddy? A hundred night sleep trial. So over three months for free that you get to try it out. And if you don't like it, you can ship it back and you get a free refund. And don't forget, Felix has a 10 year warranty. And they even offer financing options and flexible payment plans. So if you go to Helix Sleep today and use offer code Y, you get up to $200 off your mattress and some free pillows on us. Not specific, not physically on not us. on us, but like, you know, on us. On, like you're, you know, not, not on us. Yeah, now back to the test, which we didn't study for and I... And I'm doing really, really great. super duper well. well. The next question asks, what is the refractory period? A, the time it takes between climaxing and being able to be aroused again. B, a block of time in which an individual is questioning their sexuality. <laughs> Okay, don't laugh at the answers. It's clear it's not that. Or C, the time it takes sperm to die once ejected from the body. Wow, I can't oh, imagine wow. what the answer is. <laughs> Ooh, this is a hard test here. A. Hey. <laughs> oh. How long does it take for sperm to die? Actually, well, actually, so if it was colder, it would last longer. You're looking at about 30 minutes maybe outside the body before it dies, depending on like heat kills it, cool, usually keeps it, I mean, like cryogenically frozen eggs, you know? Oh. You can, I don't know, I think you if can you, freeze sperm. If you froze my sperm, they would shiver to death. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> Next question asks, which of these is not a position in the Kama Sutra? A, the pterodactyl. B, pterodactyl. the majestic <laughs> lobster. Yes, please act out each of them as you, no, no, the majestic lobster, B. Okay. C, splitting bamboo. Or uh, D, ascent to desire. Uh, de ascent, not descent. Oh, <laughs> sorry, it went the wrong way. <laughs> the Kama Sutra. We this one's harder because we I don't know all the positions in the Kama Sutra, but we've talked about the Kama Sutra before, but never. I'm gonna ah! I'm gonna mm. say the pterodactyl. Well, don't tell me. Write oh. it down. Well, I'm, I'm gonna say A. I wanna say A too, but then we're saying the same answer again. Because we're both smart. But you, I, I know that your desire to win is going to make you... Okay, three, two, one. A. I think it's A too, only because pterodactyl seems odd for the Kama Sutra, which comes from... Is it pterodactyl or pterodactyl? Do you not know how pterodactyl is spelled? It does, is it really with a P? Yeah. Ah! Majestic lobster? <laughs> Wait, what is the pterodactyl? <laughs> I need to know. Brooch, a hat, a pterodactyl? Surely you can't be serious. I am serious. And don't call me Shirley. That's the pterodactyl. Huh. Yeah, it's no wonder the dinosaurs are extinct. They have to hold that position. <laughs> oh, God. Next question. What is Carl Maria Kurt Benny famous for? A. He was an early German LGBTQ rights campaigner. B. He was infamously given electroshock therapy for asexuality. Or C. He was the first to coin the term heterosexual and homosexual. A, I don't know who the person is. B, they all sound like they could be real. And C, sounds like the right answer. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Why do you say that? Because it just seems real, like something that they would do. Yeah, that sounded like the most real answer. And the name sounds familiar. Yay! We're both right. Two points. Uh, yeah, I figured that shocking someone for their asexuality probably wasn't in the history books because asexuality is definitely not as well known back then. Right. And A, and this looks like a history question. Yes. Yeah. Oh, no. Look at us using Look at us. Thinking. We're so smart. Next question. In which U.S. state is it illegal to sell sex toys? Alabama, Utah, 
Florida or Texas, they all feel real. That all feels know, like all I four. I think I know. Okay. Is it only one state? Well, we were just in one state and we were in a sex toy shop. So yeah, so it can't be good. that one. A, Alabama, B, Utah, C, Florida, or D, Texas. And I know Florida, you can sell sex toys. So it's you, between the, the Alabama and Utah. D is big in Texas. Everything's bigger. Right. Utah is a Mormon state. I'm going with Utah. Because we've talked about this in a podcast, I think. Alabama. I think it's A. All right. I think it's A. Which one should I choose? Oh, Utah. Oh. No! Damn it! The state senator, Tom Butler, introduced the ban in 1998 when he sponsored the Anti-Obscenity Enforcement Act. That's where we've talked about mm. it. First time offenders face a fine of $10,000 and one year in prison, while multiple offenses can get you up to 10 years. Is this why they have so many children in Alabama? Because they don't have sex toys? What the f Don't put people in prison because you're so bad at sex. That is wild. In this day and age. Com commenters, if you live in Alabama, I'm sure you will affirm that people probably sell them, but it's a law that just hasn't held up because obscenity, as we know, is a very murky topic. So can Amazon not ship to Alabama? Oh. I think this next one we're gonna get, I feel like. Which color represents S&M in the gay hanky code? And there's no ABC, just write the color. Three, two, one, black. black! Leather's very well known for being kinky. And I think it just, it makes sense. Yeah, oh, I, should, I, should I click it? Click it. Oh my God! Oh my God, who knew? This next one says, how many sperm cells are contained in an average ejaculation? Oh God. 4 million, 40 million, or 400 million? I feel like this is a trick because you're they're they're gonna go low and high. Okay, three, two, one, four. B. You said forty. Yeah. We were both it's wrong. Oh. How did we not know that? While it only takes one sperm to fertilize an egg, an estimated four hundred million cells are released every time someone ejaculates. That's a lot. Wow. How did you not know that? How embarrassing. You were you. you were just as far off. Yeah, I know, but it's less embarrassing for me. <laughs> Why is it less embarrassing for you? Because I always get them wrong. The next question, what is the average length of a penis when erect? A, 7.1 inches. B, 6.34 inches. C, 5.14. Why is it so specific? Or D, 4.9. I think I know. Based on studies that we have done recently. We've, we've talked about this a number of times as well. I know, and I, I'm torn between two sizes. Why are you such a size queen? <laughs> Three, two, one. What'd you say? I said uh, 5.14. Me too! Oh good! I'm pretty sure it's between five and six. It could be 4.9 though. I'm pretty sure it's between five and six. Yeah. Yes! Yay, look at us go! Most penises are around five inches long when erect, and about 5% are bigger than a six inch and 5% are smaller. Not nine like they say on every porn site? What? As someone who's been on sites like that before, they have lied about my size to the point where I was like, oh really, am I? Am I? Ooh, <laughs> Ooh, I'm, I'm huge now. <laughs> I'm average, but I'll take a few inches. Speaking of clapping, let's talk about herpes. When did herpes become a common infection? A, in the 1970s, B, in the 2000s, C, in the 19th century, or D, thousands of years ago? That That's a lot of, differences in numbers. Three, two, one. I said D, thousands of years ago. Oh really, I said 70s. It's been around longer than that, right? Well, you said common. Okay, that's fair. I think the breakout on herpes was the 70s. Um, let's, I'll, let's go with thousands of years and see what they say. You're right. Correct, scientists <laughs> believe herpes virus jumped from chimpanzees to human race 1.6 million years ago. All right, fine. But I think we really heard about it in the 70s, so that's when it was common. <laughs> that was, oh really? You wanna to talk to them plague doctors about what was, was common nowadays? You know that most people have some form of herpes. Yeah, it's like one in two. Even probably higher than that. Oh, okay. How about this one? What is your best protection against HIV during anal sex? A, a condom, B, prep, or C, lube? I know which one it's not. It's not lube. <laughs> this one feels like a trick question though. I think it's B, but it's a trick question. They want you to say condom because they think most people don't think what, like know what prep is. Right. Yeah. Hey, yeah, 99.9% .9 effective. Yeah. Although condoms are great, but not 100% effective and can break very easily. Where prep, one a day, you're pretty much guaranteed. 
Condoms were the rule and great before prep. Prep has now replaced it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dude, did you plan this? How many people in the US are infected with oral herpes? Most people have some form of herpes. Yeah, it's like one in two. A, one in 10, uh -huh. B, one in six, C, one in four, or D, one in two. So. <laughs> That's not fair. I I gave you the answer. You cheated. D. You didn't say oral, or I would have known it. I mean, mouths are usually involved. I'm saying, yes, you cheater. Cheater! Uh, You're a cheater! Half of American adults are infected. True or false? Your period can sync with your roommate's cycle. I say false. I say true. Really? Okay, let's see, let's see, let's see. True, we'll go with true. No! No! Based on a study in 2017 where researchers at Oxford who used a period tracking app, Clue, proved that cycles do not actually sync. And just because you spend time around somebody does not mean that you're going to sync up. Period. And lastly, which term was the most searched term in Pornhub in 2019? Didn't we cover this? We did. A, MILF. B, celebrity. C, twink. Or D, amateur. Ready? Three, two, one. I said D, amateur. I did too. Why? But I almost said MILF because I think MILF was five years ago and amateur was fairly recently. Do you know what happened in 2019? Only Early fans? COVID. Oh. And so I think that's when amateur was very popular because only fans and fan sites, but also people were inside for a lot for that year. And so. Let's see if you're right. I think it's right. I think it's right. Yay! We both get a point. Nice job. Well, we all know who failed this test and is putting put into tension for cheating. I would still say though, Dad, you did a pretty good job for thank you for for not having studied for the test again. I think we both did really well. Thank you. I did really good. I kept up with you. Yes, you did great. You always do great. What do I get? Uh, you get to clean the whiteboards. Yay! Okay, well, whether you're taking the test or writing it, whether you're using BuzzFeed or some other actual test, always remember to have a safe word. And today's safe word is... Period. Period. We hope you guys all learned something today and enjoyed the testing of our own wits because I think that we happen to know a lot about the kink stuff. Period. But every once in a while, if you talk about the actual, like, very boring, personally, sex education aspects, it can be pretty difficult. I didn't know a lot of those questions, but we both used pretty good critical thinking to figure it out. And I think these quizzes actually make you start Googling and looking for information yourself. So that's a good learning tool. That's a fact. The internet is a place where people learn the most about sex education, unfortunately. Because they don't teach it in school. Correct. So hopefully this not only opens your eyes to maybe some educational factors, maybe makes your sex life a bit safer or reminds you to get tested, period. And if you want to see our shows every time and not just periodically, ring that bell. And don't forget to subscribe to What's a Safe Word. We'll see y'all next time. Bye. Bye. So I think. No, I, I still think, won and I think I forgot a point. I think I forgot a point. Okay, well good. We're both on the same page. And I, I think I forgot two points. <laughs> If you guys want to see more tests like this, link us some actual decent tests. BuzzFeed's a joke, but like, you know. I mean, some of them were stumpers. Some of the questions were good. Yeah. yeah. Some of them were stumpers. Some of them were peggers. Some, some of them, them were, were cup easy. holders. Cup holders? Did I say cup holders? You said cup holders. <laughs> <laughs> what kink is that? Are you a cup holder? I'm a cup. Hey, that's my drink. Stop cup holding. <laughs> I'm going to say A. No, no, wait, wait. Let me, I'm still thinking. I'm going to say A. Wait, please. I'm gonna say, hey, this is Bradley's boutique behavior we talked about. <laughs> yes. <laughs>